Okay, uh, so welcome to our uh, LIDA lab. So in this lab, we are going to um, upload and LIDA data into OneDrive folder or into AppStream. Um, and next, we are going to create a new um, uh, project in ArcGIS Pro so that we can view those uploaded uh, 3D objects, so that which is converted from the LIDAR data. So before we start, we need to download the data, uh, upload data to AppStream or to your OneDrive folder. So uh, here you can see I have already downloaded data from Canvas. So you, you first you have download data from Canvas to your local computer, and next. I'm going to upload the file to AppStream. Uh, so I go to the file folder. Uh, so uh, you can upload to uh, the folder that you like, but I would highly recommend that we still upload the file to our OneDrive folder. So I go to my OneDrive folder, and this is Labs 4. So let me see, create a new folder called Lab 4 and click that folder and here you can see you can upload your files uh, so you can upload the files uh, through the app stream just as i'm doing here or you can upload the file to your OneDrive folder uh, before uh, uh, you connect to app stream and next you go to app stream you should be able to find out the file that you uploaded so here i create a new folder on my OneDrive folder and i click upload files and I say, okay, week five, and the data is called that, uh, 3D model.obg. Okay, so um, let me click that and uploading. Uh, so this is uh, OBG found that it converted from the uh, the ladder points. So the, those ladder points are collected by using our sensors. Um, so if you watch the, the, the last lecture video, you will know that our sensor is not a professional sensor. So that means those X, Y, Z are not geocoded and it is a single written sensor. Okay. Okay. Uh, next, once we have uploaded, so let's open ArcGIS Pro. So we log in with our GMU URL. And here, this is your GMU ID and also password. Okay, uh, so now ArcGIS Pro is starting. So again, remember that you have you need to upload your data to your uh, OneDrive folder or your AppStream folder that before this. Okay, uh, so here um, we're in this uh, interface where you can see the previous labs. So for this lab, because we are going to look at the 3D objects, so let's try to create a, a, a project that starts with a local scene template. So let's select the local scene template. And let's see, this is where will be our lab for. And I don't want to create a new folder for this project, but I do need to tell um, ArcGIS Pro where to create the, the folder project. So in my case, that is in the AppStream user. And also beneath my files and the OneDrive folder. Okay, and within the OneDrive folder, I should see the folder that I've created for this semester and Lab 4. Okay, so okay, so I call it Lab 4 and also I use a folder that in one OneDrive folder, Lab 4, where I just uploaded the 3D model to this folder. And next, I click OK. All right, so now you can see that this is now in a 3D scene. And uh, on the left corner, you can see that the uh, navigator is here. So it looks like a 2D map, but actually it's already in 3D scene. Um, so if you expand our folder, and you can see here we have all those uh, database toolbox that have been set up. 
Uh, however, the 3D model that we uploaded uh, is not showing up here because by default, uh, the OBJ file is not recognized uh, by ArcGIS Pro. So one thing we need to do is that we need to import that 3D file. So just as we did in the previous GPS lab that we need to import that GPX file into ArcGIS Pro. So here, I'll go to analysis and find out the toolbox. And see, we want import 3D file. So let's just search import 3D. And the first toolbox is the one that we need to use here. So let's click that one. Okay, so it may take a while that we um, can uh, this tool are fully loaded. So next, we choose the input file. So we browse. And so if you did everything correctly, so you can see that the default folder is lab folder, and you can see that OBG file is here. So let's check that one. Um, and the output, so I think they should give us a default output. So let's leave that one as it is. Uh, you can also define the coordinate system here. However, we don't need to do that here. Okay, so this may sound weird. So it's the first time and probably the only time that in this lab that we don't need to define the coordinate system. The reason is because our sensor is not a professional sensor. So uh, the sensor does not have a GPS unit. So all the points are not geocoded. So the X, Y, Z are just simply the relative distance between the sensor to the to the target. So it is not geocoded. So there's no way that you can choose the, the a good coordination system. Okay, so let's uh, leave everything as default. So then let's just run it. Okay, uh, it probably took about uh, one minute that on my side, uh, on my uh, on my app stream count to finish this uh, tool. And if you go to your catalog, and I think if you expand your database, you will see that the street object is now loaded into, is saved into our local geospatial database. And also on the left, you can see that um, the data is now loaded. However, you cannot see that on the map because uh, it is not geocoded, so the data does not contain any coordination system. Uh, so let's just uncheck the base map. Okay, and if you right click the imported uh, data and select zoom to layer. Okay, and now you can see that the building, the model is loaded. And if you expand this online navigator and you can just play with those uh, this online navigator and you can rotate the house. Uh, this is actually the, the building that um, in our department. Okay. I think this is a, a, a room that we have the vending machine, I guess. Um, okay. Uh, something that, there are several things that we can do. So first, let's check the attribute. See what what non-spatial information we have. So if we open the attribute table, and we should be able to see just one single record, okay? So uh, it's multi-patch, just one identity, and also the name. So it's, it's a very simple attribute table. Okay, so it looks like everything is, all the entire object is considered one record, uh, and also one uh, object in ArcGIS Pro. Okay, uh, because again, we are using a, a non-professional um, sensor, so the data quality is not very good. Okay, uh, so next, let's look at the properties of the data. So if we go to the properties, and normally you will see that we, if we go to the mental data, and you can see the mental data is empty. So, so if you want to share this one with others, the, 
it's always a, the best practice that you fill in those information. So the other people, when they are using data, they will know that what the data are talking about. And if we go to the uh, source, and if we go to the spatial reference, and you can see this is an unknown coordinate system. So that act is right. Again, so uh, the data is not geocoded. So the, uh, in original data, so it's, it's just relative distance between each single point of the target to the sensor. So uh, which we cannot choose the right coordinate system. Um, next, so we can try something on this one. So for example, if we go to the, the appearance, Okay, um, I think, and next we go to symbology. So again, so here if you have multiple fields, probably you can display the color by the fields. But here, because we have only single field, so let's just choose a single symbol. And next, if we choose a color, and you can see this is a 3D object, so you can choose different type um, of the color. So you can choose like, say, gray, 60% um, transparency with edges. So let's, let me try that. Okay. Uh, so that is in a gray color. Uh, if let's see what we want to use the red. Okay, so that will not displace the edges. Okay, and you can try any color that you like. Okay, so this is blue. Okay, and you can also rotate. Uh, you can move down and also move up. And also you can zoom in and also zoom out. Okay, uh, next, let's try to do some mirrors. So if we go to the map, and you can see here, we can do a lot of mirrors. We can mirror distance, area, and also features. Uh, so let's just mirror the distance. And you can choose a unit. So let's choose meters. And let's say we click the first starting point. And you can see automatically they can mirror uh, along with the object. So they have in uh, the lens. Of the segment and also length of total paths, etc. Okay, so that's, that's I think that's pretty cool. Uh, and also you can see the the segment, the mirror of the different segment. Again, this is not accurate uh, because it is not uh, georeferenced, so that those mirrors are not accurate. Okay. So that's something that you can try to play with. So if we if you have a data that is from the professional LiDAR sensor and also geocoded, so then you can mirror the, the height, uh, the area, etc. So that will be very, very accurate. Okay, the last thing that I want to show you is that if we go to the analysis, um, ArcGIS Pro has added a lot of great uh, 3D analysis, which uh, I haven't used a lot, so but here I want to use show one thing that is called 3D exploratory analysis, which here, so you can see if you want to do some interactive analysis. Uh, so first thing I want to show is called slice. So let's try that. Um, so slice, so that means it, it gave us the ability that we can see the inside of this object. Okay, so now I have an error. So let me just restart the ArcGIS Pro. Okay, uh, so if you are still with me, so uh, ArcGIS Pro just crashed when I was trying to use this interactive visualization. So I just restart ArcGIS Pro and also fortunately Lab4 was saved. And also this 3D object was also there. So let's, let me drag it again to Access Pro in this local scene. Okay, 
Um, and let's just zoom in to the object. So zoom to layer. Uh, we can turn off the other layers. Okay, uh, and again, you can change the colors if you like. So let's say we want to change the color. Uh, let's see, let's see, try gray. Okay, so let's save the project immediately, just in case it will crash again. And also for the lab, you need to provide screenshot. So this is probably the best time that you should capture the screenshot as well. So let me save it. Okay, uh, let's expand the navigator. So we have already done the mirror part. So now let's go to the analysis. Uh, let's do this interactive analysis. So here I'm going to try the slice. And uh, let's try use the first one. So that will allow us to see the inside of these three objects. So horizontal. Uh, so we click this feature. And now you can see if you just move on this plane. So I think that's pretty cool. And if you tilt the object a little bit, so which way that you can see the inside. Okay. I think that that, that is a, that's something that is pretty cool. Uh, you can try the other things as long as the object pro is not <laughs> allow you to do that. So uh, for some DM, then you can try the view shed if you have DM data or the other very complicated data, 3D data. Uh, you can also try the view dome, uh, light of the site, and also cart of cart and fill. So. Uh, I haven't used those a lot, so I'm still learning those tools, but I think the slice is one thing that's pretty cool. And also light of sight is another thing that's pretty cool. So basically that can tell you that if you are putting your camera to different places, and they can tell you, so okay, so whether or not you can see it or not. So if that is green, the line is green, that means you can see it. And for the gray part, I think that is basically, um, that means that uh, you cannot see that uh, through the green part because that is building inside. That's part inside this building. All right, okay. Uh, so that is a LiDAR uh, data uh, lab. So actually we are not viewing the real LiDAR. So we are viewing the 3D object that created from a LiDAR data. And ArcGIS Pro has a lot of great uh, functions and also tools that now allow us to view the data in 3D. Okay, I think that that's pretty cool. Okay, and finally, you can just clear all the analysis. 